lecture blah on reviewing conditionals, uh, namely if statements, how do we implement that logic, and the program we will go over in this little video is when I have the month given in number form, I need to produce that word for the appropriate season. Okay, so as a quick um, review of that, uh, if I enter one, it should give me winter, if I give seven, it should spit out summer, and if I enter three, that's a spring because it's March, and so our program should do something like that. You could write a function for that, but uh, you could also just write this code out in uh, Python. Uh, you should be thinking about, okay, first, like 1, 2, 3, well, 12, 1, 2 should give us um, winter. Let's start with that, just that part. So my program right now will just look for and check 12, 1, and 2, just to start. Because I know that if I get this going, I can quickly change these numbers to match those other months. And then what do we do? Okay, let's go do um, a variable. Okay, but let's, before we dive into code, I, right now I'm trying to model for you how I would sketch out that program. So I'm using comments to organize my initial thinking before diving into just writing out the code. Um, right now, our programs may be small enough so that when we do dive into the code, it works. But for larger programs like your tic-tac-toe, you're spending some time planning, thinking it out, so that once, so you're not like lost once you encounter like a specific coding issue. Um, computer scientists call this like pseudo coding or like uh, mapping out what your program or algorithm should do. Very good practice. So first off, like one of the first steps that I'm going to do in this program is I'm going to ask the user for a month. Oh, right. So I'm in JavaScript. The comment is the hashtag symbol. Ask user for a month in number form. Once I have that, let's say I must store it in a variable. I have to remember, store in a variable, user, month. What do I do with that? And then afterwards, once I have that number, let's say the user pressed one in this example, and so now I have to give it winter. But it's only one, 12, or two. Check to see which season the user, which, I guess, yeah, season the user. Check to see which season. What does that look like? Okay, in this short example, we're like, okay, and then you give or print out the appropriate season. If I did this well, each of these comments in this pseudo coding stage and your organizing stage before writing code, each of these should translate to a couple lines of code that has a, um, an isolated job. So over here, maybe we'll call it user input or what I call it, user month. We ask for an input, so I'm using the input function, I'm going to ask, give me a month. And then I store it in a variable, user month, good, and I'm just going to see, okay. I call these sanity checks, so one way of writing your program is do a little bit at a time, and make sure your little bit works before moving on. Because, for example, if I started coding beyond this point, beyond line six, and I realized that I didn't, I made an assumption that my user month was stored correctly, and I got to go all the way back, and suddenly all the other code I wrote was broken, um, you want to prevent that situation from happening. So check yourself early. Right now, I did like one or two steps. I user month, I prompted the user, and then I stored it in user match. So when I give it two, it should give me two down here. Yes, and then if I run this once more and then give me a month, if I give it seven, my program should print out that exact seven. Neat. Okay, now we move on. Okay, so when I see the structure here, only 12, one, or two should be printing out winter. Um, I'm drawn to our favorite if statement. You gotta check, is the user month for comparison, it's double equals. JavaScript uh, students last semester, we used the uh, triple equals. This is the comparing, two equal signs versus one equal sign. So if the user month is 12, what do we do? 
yeah, return. Uh, for now, we'll just use print uh, winter. So notice um, part of the transition to Python is you need to pay attention to this white spacing. Notice that I put a colon, but also I indented it over. It's it really finicky. It really uh, matters, that spacing. So now if I put in 12, uh, did it print me winter? User month, give me a month, print user month, it print 12. If user month equals 12, oh, I think it's a string. So if I type, if I check type user, user month, yeah, it's of type string. So uh, I go back up here. So when I run my program, let me do that once more. Okay, give me a month. I press 12. And it printed 12, so that's line 6. And then it went down here, it ignored my comment, ignored my comment. And as soon as it got down here for this line, when I said equals 12, notice 12 right now is the integer. And when you type user input, like when you're working on vacation time, it thinks that this right now is a string. That's a bunch of characters. It has quotation marks. And this type comparison won't be equal. So you have an integer on the left-hand side, 12. That's not equal to, for example, what am I saying? I'm saying right now, like, 12 like this should not be equal to 12, oops, 12 like that. False. That's why my if statement didn't print out winter. One way to fix this is you can tell Python, okay, make this into a number. So essentially, it's doing something like this. You know, 12 right now is of type string, and we're making it of, you're turning it into a number, specifically an integer. Int 12 equals 12. Or integer of the string 12 is now equal to 12, written like that. So if you add that in, and we rerun our program, give me a month. Sandy check, 12 should give me winter. Oh, good. Questions so far? I imagine you can now implement the other if statements. For now, you can think about it as uh, individual if statements to get that practice over a couple months, changing it a little bit. Maybe you can also then go back and then write it in uh, less lines of code. I'm going to pause my screencast.